I am Jim Collison, and live from the Gallup campus here in Omaha, Nebraska, this is Gallup's Called the Coach, recorded on January 23rd, 2015. Called the Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use their strengths. We have Gallup experts and independent strengths coaches share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you have questions or comments during the webcast, we do have a live chat room that's available for you. It's, if you're watching the video, it's just right below the main video window. Don't be scared to sign in there. You can create a guest account or any other, uh, any other social media services, Twitter, Facebook, kind of those. You can log in with those. It's a great way to interact with us and get questions into the show. We'll handle those as we, as we progress along, but it's a great way to interact with us and get those in. If you, uh, if you have some questions about custom strengths coaching solutions for small, medium, or large organizations, you can send us an email. Always just send your questions as well, coaching at gallop.com. And, of course, there's a contact form right there on the page. If you're at coaching.com slash live, there's a contact form. You can use that as well. Don't forget to visit the Gallup Strength Center. That's just gallopstrengthcenter.com for all your coaching resources and training needs. You can also catch and, and the brand-new EP10 that's out there on the, nice. at the Strength Center. You can also catch the video in both streaming and downloadable audio for offline listening. We were talking about that in the pre-show. All kinds of ways for you to – you don't have to come live. You can listen to it later, and many of you are. We actually had a 1,000 play day the other day, Jeremy, on that where 1,000 people downloaded or played the audio content. It's available out there as well. All that information, best place to find that, coaching.gallup.com. Jeremy Petrosini is our host today. He works as a senior learning and development consultant with Gallup here on the riverfront. And, uh, Jeremy, it's great to see you again, and welcome to another Call to Coach. Jim, thanks. Yeah, great great to be here and uh, excited. Welcome back to many of you coaches out there. Uh, it's again fun to kind of jump into our new year and kind of continue to hear from hear from coaches. And Jim mentioned the uh, the new EP10, formerly known as the Entrepreneurial Strength Finder. Um, we've, we're in the process of rebranding that, just the EP10 Entrepreneurial Profi- Profile 10. And uh, I'm excited. Actually, our guest today has been through our two-day training on that. I've uh, been actually leveraging this both as an entrepreneur and with entrepreneurs. But Dan Shundoff is our guest. He is a Gallup Certified Strength Coach. Uh, 20-year veteran, uh, CEO in the technology services sector. Uh, Again, kind of both leveraging his strengths, talents within his company um, and his entrepreneurial talents to uh, to run the company he's he's run and then mentor other entrepreneurs. So, uh, Dan, you know you know this drill, but uh, for people that are new out there, again, part of our passion around coaches is that we currently have just over 11 million. It's about 11.3 million people that have completed Strength Finder. And it's our goal to get to a billion, but to do that, um, it's, it's, uh, it's our passion. We believe that we're not going to be able to do that in an impactful way without reaching a million coaches. So, Dan, you're one of those millions, so thanks for, uh, thanks for being on the show today. Hey, thanks for having me, Jeremy. You bet. Now, your top five, and you can correct me if I, I don't have this right. It's always interesting for people, but futuristic, achiever, relator, responsibility, maximizer. That's me. That's correct. Yep. And I always say if you get Maximizer, which is my top one, those are, that's the best one to have anyway. So <laughs> well, it depends on who you ask sometimes. <laughs> the uh, yeah, so so let let's just jump right in, Dan. Uh, I know again I alluded to the fact you were just here in December. You and I got to connect uh, when you went through. We did two actually back to back two day courses around the around the EP10 uh, profile tool. Um, you got to go through that. Again, you've been using this, have had exposure to Gallup before, but tell us a little bit about your journey of uh, being called to coach. Uh, like from the beginning, not just on the EP10 or Not just on the EP10. Just from give the us, beginning? Yeah, give us the, give us sure. the beginning. Yeah. yeah, so I was, I was very fortunate. Uh, it's, I think it's 2010, maybe 2011 time frame. Uh, the state of Nebraska, the Department of Economic Development partnered with Gallup, uh, the university, the Omaha Chamber, um, trying to think if there was another partner in there or not, but really put a pilot together called the Entrepreneurial Acceleration System, right? It was a, really a, a fantastic experience for me and my company. We got a, a tremendous amount of exposure to several Gallup sciences, right? So not just StrengthsFinder, but we also were able to sort of expose my management team to some business growth components to the science, uh, some research around that. Also got some exposure to Q12, which is something I hope to we get to hit on a little bit today. Sure, yeah. Um, and also 
uh, the CE11, which is the customer engagement piece. And when you put all that stuff together, uh, at least for me, and the maximizer talent you just sort of hit on, uh, boy, that was really sort of unleashed a bit of a beast, some might say. Yeah. Yeah, the um, the cool thing, and again, I, I, I'm envious a little bit of you going through that program. I had a colleague of mine or a, a buddy of mine who's an entrepreneur. I got to go through it as well. But I think there were about 200 um, companies over the, the few years that we did it that got to go through it. But again, like you said, it just it gave you that insight. Had you had, had you come across Strength Finder, the Clifton Strength Finder tool before? Or was all that brand new to you? Brand new. Uh, so that was what the did, first exposure we got. What did it mean for you? And you were CEO of your company at the time, right? You've yep. been running it for years. What did it validate for you that you were already doing right? Or what even in, in that short window back in 2010, what did it kind of help you do even better over the yeah, last four years. So yeah. fantastic question. So 20 years, you mentioned we'd been in business for about 20 years. You forgot to say that I started when I was in junior high. Okay. Yeah. That was really important <laughs> to make sure everyone out there knew. Uh, so yeah, 20 years. Um, and I'd say the first half of that sort of life as a business was very challenging, very hard, uh, arduous, uh, growth was difficult. Uh, so much stuff that I didn't know. I really don't have a business background. Quite frankly, I don't have a technology background. But, you know, so really, so really why not a lot start of a business? Lifting. Why yeah. not start a technology business, right? <laughs> Great idea, right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, but in the last 10 years, I'd say we've done a much better job. I'm very purposeful, very focused. I'm part of a peer group uh, of technology companies similar to mine. And that has been, you know, incredibly influential. And... I'd say that uh, the first part of the uh, EAS experience uh, that started with Strengths Finders, and it really took us through the Gallup path, right? So, mm -hmm. so you start in one spot, which was talent and strengths, and then you're, what you're really looking for is to build sustainable growth, right? And there are several steps along the way. So it did a couple things. For one, it's it sort of uh, just self-awareness for myself and the rest of my management team and, and the organization as a whole. That was... That was a profound piece of uh, the experience. And then I think there was a little bit of a, uh, at some point we started to realize that, you know, w we are doing some things right. The science sort of confirmed that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were doing it and it was sort of accidental, right? We were, we were doing some of the right things, but not because we knew we should be doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just doing them. It was just luck, right? And and so the shift that said, hey, that seems like the right thing to do versus, hey, this is the right thing to do, and let's do more of it, and let's do it more often, and let's make it part of the operations. Let's let's sort of turn it into the culture and operationalize some of this stuff. That's when things really started to change for us, yeah, operationalizing cool. it. Yeah, and, and that piece, and we'll come back to this too, but I think one of the things you're hitting on, not just with strengths, um, but you referenced you know, Gallup's Q12 assessment that we yep. use, obviously, to measure engagement. But all of that, again, not just tools that we were throwing at you, a small business owner, because you needed something new. It was just, as you said, mm -hmm. a way to really measure those outcomes, those yep. business outcomes or, or growth pieces. Talk a little bit too, and again, we'll come back to some of that with, with your business, because I think there's a lot of interest out there of, you know, how do you, how do you do that? How do you measure the impact of strengths and some of those things with, with um, kind of profitability and some other pieces that are, yep. that are critical to business growth. But talk a little bit too, I know, aside from then how you began to then use those tools within your business, um, you know, that, that EAS program, that entrepreneurial acceleration system that Nebraska did, uh, you were assigned a mentor, essentially somebody who, who was a coach, understood Gallup's tools, constructs, helped you with that. And then you had the opportunity to become a mentor. Talk yeah. a bit about that and even kind of that journey then to go, man, I should get certified as a, as a coach, right? In, invest the time and the money. I know to, to keep an entrepreneur in a classroom for two hours is tough, right? But to, <laughs> to lock you in for four and a half days, sure. to, <laughs> well, that was, that was your own challenge. But talk about what, what was it that you enjoyed about that opportunity and even moving into um, or that commitment you then made to want to go through the four and a half day training? Sure. Well, first of all, pretty lucky uh, to have a management team uh, at my business that, you know, they, they really do a fantastic job. And so uh, I had the flexibility to sort of take that interest in the uh, sort of the fire and the passion that uh, I got from the EAS program as a participant. Yep. 
uh, and, I, and I sort of led the charge within my own organization and you know I'd walk down the halls and we'd be talking about talent and strengths and how to leverage it and it was part of our meetings and I started to get the have a fear that it's possible that I could be wearing my people out to some extent right just uh, it was just all the time uh, maximizer a little bit I suppose uh, so then I thought, you know, if I really want to do a whole bunch of this and not burn people out, mm -hmm. I probably need to broaden my sort of sphere of influence, right? Mm -hmm. And I started asking good friend of mine, good friend of yours, Todd Johnson, about, hey, what does this look like? How does this work? Back in the day, 2010, uh, I, I don't think there was a non-gallop badged sort of coaching yeah. program, right? So right. There, I nope. think there had been in the past and then maybe mm -hmm. tighten that up a little bit. And so uh, as I kept asking and asking, suddenly, you know, there was a, a whole new dean and his team built a, a whole new sort of learning platform, uh, figured out how to uh, bring coaches up to speed at a really high level and deliver consistent, you know, coaching and programs and, and influence. And uh, I, I jumped at it. I think I was, I don't know, maybe in the second class uh, that went through that. So one of the first 40 or 50, you know, coaches, certified coaches throughout that new program. So that was kind of exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's use this to segue in because I know, I know, again, knowing part of your story and how you've been able to leverage it, even, again, within your business but outside your business, share with the other coaches out there some of those impact stories. So how have you seen – Again, your knowledge then, and the depth of knowledge you then gained um, becoming a certified coach, really leveraging and mastering these tools. How have you seen that create impact? And again, you can talk about individuals, uh, teams, your business, outside of work. Just share a few with us because sure. I know you've got a whole list of uh, ways that you've kind of been energized by this. Yeah, so, you know, for me, I think a high, really high relator, right? That's – so for me uh, – large group presentations, right? Uh, or, you know, large corporate engagements where there might be dozens and dozens and dozens of, of uh, people that I'm sort of taking through a program. I do that, and, but the ones that are really meaningful to me are the small, intimate ones. Mm. I really, really prefer uh, to, one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching is great, Operational impact within an organization is, is really a key component for me. I really enjoy that. Seeing the outcomes, I guess, is what I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, less of a you know, two-hour workshop once a week with a new group every time and more of a I want to engage. I want to do a 12-month or a 24-month engagement, and I want to get close. I want to get deep, uh, and I want to have an, an, an effect, right? So that's, that really has drawn me in all kinds of uh, really incredible stories about, you know, unleashing some potential within someone, uh, whether it's a, a leadership sort of approach. And I, I do present quite often with uh, the role-based platform around strengths-based leadership. Okay. Um, which is why the entrepreneurial profile 10 is, is interesting to me, because uh, it's also a role-based application of talent and strengths. Mm -hmm. Uh, so hey, real, real quick too, with the EP10, do you know your your results offhand, or even how many of those were dominant? That was one of the questions. Yeah, nine Jim nine said. of mine were dominant. Okay. Uh, creative thinking, knowledge seeker, business focus. You know, those were all towards the top. Yep. Uh, promoter was at the bottom. Okay. Uh, so so even when you're talking about that small smaller groups versus the huge yep. platform, right? So being being a coach versus just being, an, you know, there's a lot of people that are strength advocates, which is great, Yep. but being a coach means, does it bring more of that one-on-one -on -one impactful, you know, to a team or a person? So, so, so you know, the education around uh, talent and strengths is something I really enjoy. That's, it's fun, it's interesting. It itself can be, you know, fairly impactful for a lot of people. They just learn a whole bunch of, you know, about, about themselves and, and uh, that's helpful and, you can see the light bulbs go off every once in a while. But the, the kind of stories that really resonate with me uh, are, go beyond that, right? It's the application. Mm -hmm. It's, hey, I did something purposefully today, and it was a game changer, right? So, 
I've worked, I was working with a client the other day and uh, needed to do some research and needed to do some writing relative to the research. And uh, that always is a, a barrier, right? It just gets stuck. Not because the research isn't interesting, not because she doesn't have enough data, not because she's not ready to put it together. It's just really hard. So we had a conversation around uh, what are the types of situations where um, she's able to really get stuff out of her mind and mm -hmm. out. High communication was, communication was one of her top five talents, and so we explored that. And we're able eventually to sort of connect the fact that the writing uh, is just another form of delivering the information. So communication was her, with her is very verbal. It's yeah. Face to face, I need to see the response. I love to present, uh, interact with the crowd, and that sort of thing. And we eventually got to a spot where she realized that if she were to get a picture in her head of the audience that she was writing for, mm -hmm. that that would sort of trigger and unleash, you know, the flow of information. Mm -hmm. And we had a call, uh, you know, probably two weeks after that, and it was done. She was able to get through the block and get the content down and get it out for review, uh, for a peer review. So that's the kind of stuff that, and it's a small thing, right? Yeah. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that once, once you do a little bit, once you find a, a success here and there, uh, you know, then the sky's the limit when you start applying in other areas of your life. Yeah, and, and you know as a coach, again, and a lot of the coaches out there who have been through some of Gallup's training or even have purchased our coaching kits, you know, know we kind of use that that model of naming, claiming, naming, right? Yep. It's like helping people to figure out what are, the, what are these five, even if they're just looking at their Clifton Strength Finder top five, what do these mean? Is it me? But then the key, and I think this is the magic, right, is how do I use that for something? Because yep. awareness is great, but again, it's like how many different assessments are out there that tell you, you know, letters about yourself or colors or if you're a golden retriever and beaver or what you know it's like there's all the all these different assessments sure. but it's like if i can't apply it towards something which exactly what you're saying if if this client of yours was stuck and now she's going i'm not anymore well the next time she's stuck she's calling you to go hey dan i need you know <laughs> help me figure this out which obviously for your your coaching business which you want you know want to be part of something you're giving time and energy and effort to and getting paid for um when you're helping people out they're going to come back so that's yeah. that's cool so Good. Talk talk a little bit too from an impact standpoint. I know you've um, you've done quite a bit, and again, this is part of just your own leadership role in the community. Um, I know um, University of Nebraska Kearney has leveraged you to 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 kind of uh, help lead some some classes, workshops. Again, just to leverage your expertise as a business leader. And I know you had the chance too, even to bring um, entrepreneurial um, strength finder or strength finder into some of those conversations. So. Share that a little bit too, because I think there are a lot of people out there that are thinking, both with strengths and with um, the EP10, you know, what do we do to to help younger, you know, younger leaders to really hear about this? But sure. Share a little bit about what you're doing there, in Carney. Yeah. So the the faculty and the administration inside of the College of Business and Technology at the University of Nebraska at Kearney, they have made strengths part of the curriculum for every incoming freshman. Okay, so cool. yep. whatever one of those required classes, strengths is on the syllabus. Uh, I don't always do the presentations, uh, but I do s most of them. I do many of them, just in terms of overview. Yep. Uh, and so that's really, I think they're using the Strengths Quest product. Yep. Yep. Uh, so the report is different than the typical Strengths Finders, but the the survey is the same, and the yep. top same, five are the same. Same assessment yep. content for those out there working with. Even high school, college student, the content's geared more for students. There's even a whole chapter on thinking about careers, those sort of things. Yep. But yeah. So course selection and extracurricular <clears throat> activities, yep. study habits, right? It really it's focused. Take your talents fear, and focus fear on woo, those areas. St don't study alone. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so so they all get that. Uh, and uh, and one of the activities that. Uh, uh, student-led group called Enactus does is they invite in high school kids at one point throughout the year and they do an entrepreneurial workshop right cool. so they come up with ideas they have to create business plans they have to you know pitch to a banker there are judges uh, set lots of kids lots of schools attend that 
And in this, uh, this year when they did it, we introduced the Entrepreneurial Strengths Finder. And uh, we were able to, uh, the, the college actually funded, paid for the assessment for any of those students that were at that uh, uh, workshop for the Entrepreneurial Workshop. I think it's called New Venture Adventure. Cool. Uh, they were able to, if they wanted to, take the assessment paid for by the university. And then uh, brought back several of those kids. I think I worked with uh, around 20. We just did a like a four-hour intense workshop where we did two hours on the EP10 content, mm -hmm. and then they did some uh, additional business uh, exercise and planning and creation and strategizing. So, yeah. So, the university and the, specifically the College of Business and Technology here in Kearney, uh, they've really embraced the concepts of talent and strengths beyond just the, I mean, they're really trying to make it part of the experience. Yeah, very, very cool. And when you, when you think too, I want to, I want to jump back um, to your business, because again, I think there, there was something you hit on earlier um, that I think comes back to this whole, how do we see strengths bring impact? Um, obviously for you, you know, there's probably different factors, right? If, you're, if your team members were energized by it or if there was better collaboration just with you and some of your key leaders or partners, great. But share with us, what were some of those big impacts? Again, I know with, with the Entrepreneur Acceleration System, uh, we were very, very um, purposefully having you think about what are those core business drivers or metrics um, that you already measure, that you say this is success at the end of the year. Talk about how you've seen um, and this is where you can talk about engagement as well, but how, you, how you've seen a focus on strengths and engagement really lead to impacting your business. Again, as, as an owner, it's like this was, this was not just something fun to do, but something that actually was a, a smart business move. Yeah, so part of the, one of the readings that uh, I was lucky enough to, to experience, was I read the book Human Sigma, right, which is a Gallup yep. publication, and it's... Yep it really brought, did a really nice job of bringing everything together. It's, yeah. it's somewhat technical, which I like. I mean, so there's quite a bit of research and findings and data yep. and so on, yep. conclusions and so on. But, but the, the concepts that say, you know, employee engagement drives customer engagement, which drives financial performance, yep. uh, it's so concise and it's, it's not really a stretch to wrap your arms around. Yep. And, and really, I think the key, the key thing for me in that was that the, the, the greatest predictor to future performance is customer engagement, right? So mm -hmm. if you can get your hand around trying to measure that, yeah. the, suddenly you have a, a leading indicator, right? So, yeah. so financial performance can be strong, customer engagement can start to dwindle, and when you see it, you have a chance to fix it before it impacts financial performance. And yeah. that, I just thought that, you know, that just was a game changer for me in terms of how I want to look at, at growing my business and managing it. So, and then you just sort of work your way back, right? What's the greatest predictor of customer engagement? Well, it just happens to be employee engagement. Right. What drives that? The ability to do what you do really well, use your natural talents and, and your role at really high levels. And so that just, I mean, uh, I don't know. It just seems so simple to me. Yeah, uh, really motivating. So that's that's what really drove our ability to operationalize it. That was a key. That was a key point. Yeah, and I think again, I think what, what's helpful to hear from your perspective again is a business leader CEO um, saying these weren't just it wasn't just an HR survey or a customer survey to make you know those two groups of people feel heard. Yep. But it was insight for us that if we can if we can focus on those, drive both of those. Um, like you said, you know, employee engagement is going to drive customer engagement, which, which is ultimately going to continue to drive, you know, your profitability yep. and growth. And so m connecting those dots, talk a little bit about, and again, you know, one of the things we always try to do on these calls is, is to offer as a coach, you know, tips or, tr or tricks to others. For you, that Q12 metric, again, that's how we measure employee engagement. Um, we've made it, obviously made it available to you through that EAS program, and now it's uh, continues to be available to small, medium-sized businesses, um, q12.gallup.com. You know, people can find out about it more there. But with that simple, simple survey, um, how have you begun to use that with some of your clients? Or why, why would you even recommend, I mean, tell the other coaches, consultants out there who maybe have just been focused on the strengths piece, yep. why you, you, you know, 
tend to involve both and, and the value that you feel like that brings? Great question. So, and there are lots of different uh, ways to coach, lots of different reasons to coach, areas to focus on. Uh, and, and so I really encourage, I think, I think if any coach finds their passion, whether it's life yep. coaching or personal development or yep. professional development, it's really important to stay focused on that, right? Yep. So I, I don't want everyone to think that this is the only way to do it. I certainly don't profess that by any stretch, but right. for me, as a, because I started before I was a coach, I was this business owner yep. making decisions around investing in things to, to develop my people. Yep. Uh, I came at it from a, the perspective of, you know, how, how will I know if it's working? Yeah. You know, what's the, how do I know? Well, so I've, I've, I've had 10 coaching sessions. I feel better. Uh, I feel like I'm doing better. Uh, I feel like I'm having a bigger impact, but how mm -hmm. do I translate that into business, right? The business mm -hmm. outcomes. Mm -hmm. And so the ability to uh, engage with a client, uh, build a program over the course of, you know, 12, 24, 36 months, and be able to say, we're going to do these things, uh, and we should expect these kind of results, and this is the tool that we're going to use to measure it. Simultaneously, uh, just not just measuring engagement, but we're also going to sort of self-report uh, business outcomes. So the kind, you know, you know, so every every industry might have slightly different uh, metrics that they yep. want to measure, but sitting down with a client and really digging into that, you can find, and you don't need 50 of them, right? You might mm -hmm. be able to find 10, 12, mm -hmm. 15 really key indicators that the business is clicking and, and heading in the right direction. Yep. So could be turnover, could be those customer metrics, all kinds, right? So we, we try to group them. We try to group them in basically four buckets. So we look at growth indicators. Uh, which could be revenue or profit, you know, that sort of thing. Yep. Uh, we also want to look at, pro you know, profitability. So uh, customer retention, dollars per transaction, right? Yep. We really want to look at the things that are driving profit. Yep. We'll also look at productivity indicators. Uh, so, uh, you know, efficiency and utilization and, oh, you might even, if you're in manufacturing, you might look at waste or scrap or, yeah. you know, downtime for a line or whatever it might be. And then to your point a second ago, uh, workforce stability. This is very expensive. Turnover, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absenteeism, you know, other things that really matter to that, that particular organization. And so we can sit down and identify the 12 or 15 key metrics so we can implement the program around talent and strengths and development. We'll even do, uh, you know, team, you know, coaching around teams and coaching for managers and really trying to develop the organization as a whole. And then uh, to be able to measure engagement along the way is huge. Otherwise, we don't know if we're impacting it. But then to simultaneously uh, measure the performance of the organization from those key uh, business outcomes. Mm -hmm. that, that again, that just seems like a really natural approach, and and most and, and it allows me to value price in engagement, which I, mm -hmm. it's, was something that was really important to me. I, I I wanted to get away from trading hours for dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with that, mm -hmm. but I really wanted to engage with clients who who saw this as an investment. Mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna I'm gonna invest X. And I'm going to get it back two or three times every year forever. Right. Right. And, and so that's the kind of conversation I want to have with, with my business clients. And talk, talk about that a little bit more because I know that's, that's something that comes up both, you know, in our, in our courses, um, in live chat, even Facebook page. A lot of independent coaches, consultants out there that are even asking, you know, what is, what's the right hourly rate? And I think it does often fall back to what you're saying you're trying to move away from. It's, is it 500 bucks for an, a coaching call? Is it 200 bucks? Talk about, and again, I think you're taking more of a consultative approach of not just saying, I have this one, you know, one feather in my cap of strengths. Now, again, there are some coaches out there, that's, that's their niche, that's what they wanna do. Yep. But I think there are others who are looking to expand their business and think differently about it. What have you done or what are some ideas, again, to just help think more of a value perspective versus that here's my hourly rate 
perspective that would help some of the coaches well, it, out there? You know, it, for me, it always starts with those business outcomes, right? So uh, more often than not, you're going to be, if you're focused on, you know, taking something and making it that much better um, as an organization, you might actually be trying to find companies that are struggling, which might even yeah. translate to how are we going to afford an engagement, right? And so yeah. you really have to have the conversation around value and investment and what's the potential of the organization if we solve a few problems. So um, they might ask you, Dan, they might say, what's your hourly rate? And you might say, before we get into, into that, let's talk about your business, right? Correct. What's what's this point of pain currently costing? All right, it's a turnover issue. What's that costing you? Yep, exactly. X hundreds of thousands or millions a year, okay. That's probably not a $500 for one hour solution, right? Yep. <laughs> so you're Correct. Like, and Plus, like you said, they might get to a point where they go, well, we can't afford any of this. And then you're probably coming back with, you, can, you can't not afford, you know, to do this. Stuff. Correct. And, and, you know, there's even, if you start working with uh, uh, people that are, you know, entrepreneurs, let's say, and it, it could be a startup, right? There, yep. may, not, yep. there may not be any funding. So, yep. so yeah, the, you know, a couple different thoughts have gone through my mind. I haven't necessarily done all of these, but as situations present themselves, I think I would be open to them. So I do think that uh, a 12 or 24 or 36 months engagement with a price, it's mm -hmm. X, not mm -hmm. talking, and here's the, here's the list of things we're going to do. Yep. Uh, and they are not individually priced necessarily, and yep. they certainly don't have hours tied to them, right? Yep. So you, it's, it's not, the hours aren't even part of the conversation at that yep. point. Yep. Uh, then I think there's a, a strategy that says, you know, can I have a piece of the gain, right? So, hey, if we affect the bottom line, I want a piece of that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think there's an opportunity to have a healthy, constructive conversation, a little risk reward on the coach's part, obviously, but the reward could be substantial if you end yep. up delivering. Yep. And then I think um, for, you know, something like a startup or a really small company, uh, maybe there's a chance to introduce to equity into the conversation mm -hmm. to say, hey, I'm, I'm here for the long run, mm -hmm. and I think we can do something special. Don't have to pay me, but I want a piece of the, I'm going to help, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I'm going to help you grow. I'm going to provide value and in exchange for that, I get, you know, a piece of the organization. Yeah. Well, and even, even again, again, this is where, you know, your natural thinking, again, business focus, you know, one of your, one of your dominant entrepreneurial talents, right? But um, that business mindset that I think so many of our coaches, we get so passionate around Strength Finder, but we're going, ah, how do, I, how do I sell it? And some of them don't want to do that. They'll partner with somebody else like you to do it. But I think for, the, for those of us out there who are trying to start these businesses, um, that element that you're hitting on is understanding the value and then even, again, positioning yourself. I love the length of time, right? So you're talking about a, a, you know, 12 months, 18 months, 36 months, there's a sense of, hey, I'm a partner to you, not a vendor, right? right. A vendor is, I purchased this product or this service, thanks, and if we need more, we'll call you. And I think when we, and again, this is even a, a Gallup overall philosophy, when we fall into that vendor category, um, the client wants the impact, but it's not realistic that it's gonna happen. Correct. When we become a partner, and I love, you know, what you're saying, especially with the EP10 tool, so many on entrepreneurial startups that they're taking risk, we might go, hey, I'll take risk with you, and here's this small percentage. I'm not necessarily a partner on paper, but if there's an equity component, there really is a sense of we feel like we're partners. We feel like we're invested in part of it with them. Um, so I, I love, love the approach. I'm sure even coaches out there, Jim, I don't know if we've got questions that are even popping up on that or, or yeah, other got a pieces, couple. but yeah, go ahead. You bet, Dan. Hey, um, so Maureen was asking, I'm a paraphraser question, but with the work, the university work that you're doing with the kids, you know, Strengths Finders is so dominantly positive because you get the top five and you're focusing on what you're best at. With EP10, you know, we're giving all 10 and we're kind of scoring those in this kind of this matrix of dominant and contributing and such. When you see a kid who's who's thinking he was going to be an entrepreneur, you know, he's moving in that direction, and yet maybe it's not, it doesn't look that way on the EP10. Have you come across those, and, and how are you coaching those with, sure. with the kids that see that? That's a great question. It happens a lot, quite frankly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the people that find themselves, well, so, yeah, entrepreneur just is a, by definition is, you know, somewhat misunderstood, right? It's not necessarily just the idea. It is the business piece. And then to have someone who, 
it is thinking about doing a business or is already doing the business and they get the report back and they see they don't really have the talents it takes to do it, uh, that's kind of a hard conversation to have with somebody. But, uh, the, you know, the strategy or the approach is to, you know, really expand upon the power of relationships, right? So it is not critical that any entrepreneur have dominant levels of intensity with all of the, the demands, right, all 10. Uh, what they need to do, if they aren't dominant themselves, they need to account for it in some form or fashion, right? So mentors are huge, uh, role models are huge, subject matter experts are huge. And so as part of the conversation and really the journey through just sort of understanding talent and knowing how to take action and apply your talents, there's a piece in there that is critical around uh, developing uh, relationships, right? The power of relationships. And so as a follow-up to that, as you run into individuals maybe who are already entrepreneurs and they've taken this, they've maybe even been successful, sure. and yet it, it may not look that way on paper. Same, same answer in the sense that they've probably surrounded themselves. And it's it's not a pass or fail, right? Even on, even on this, right? You can have them all green, still be successful if you've been successful in surrounding yourself with people, right? I mean, that's kind of the message of it. I think we, we still have some folks who think it's pass or fail. Talk a little bit about maybe yeah. some folks who have experience that you've worked with. Yeah. So, you know, the report itself, certainly uh, what it does tell you, you're, what you're naturally talented at. And it also tells you uh, intensity levels of those talents, right? but it certainly doesn't tell you whether you should or shouldn't be in an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And it certainly doesn't uh, tell you how successful you are going to be, right? That's not the, that's not the point at all. So the ability to take the, the report and the information and explore it and apply it and learn about it and develop it and then direct it, those, those conversations can always include other resources, right? And, you know, pe that's one of the things that typically happens on accident anyway. Oh, I, I didn't know that I needed this type of relationship with my banker. I just happened to have it. And, oh, by the way, it was huge for my success. Well, this sort of takes some of that guesswork out of the equation. When should I assert my own dominant talents? Uh, and when should I really deliberately, purposefully reach out and find partners subject matter exports, experts, other resources that could sort of fill in the gap or cover my blind spot, if you will. So that, that, that's part of just about every conversation. I've not run into anyone who has uh, 10, I've not worked with anyone who has, I know they're out there, but I haven't worked with anyone who has uh, all 10 dominant. All 10 dominant. You know, my, my report came out very, very, a lot of dominant, you know, seven and with three and supporting, but um, and it looks on paper, it looks like I'm that, that typical hard charging entrepreneur. And that scares the, you know, daylights out of me to think about going out on my own. And I've often thought, you know, I'm, I, I might be the perfect, uh, inter, inner company entrepreneur, the, the one inside a company who takes on these new initiatives, these new things that people haven't tried before. I need a little bit of a safety net from, from that standpoint, I would not want to do it on my own, but put me in a group of people where I can be kind of the, the front runner and doing new things. And I do really, really well. So I think we have to take some of those things into mind too, right? When you're thinking about the, about the assessment. That's one of my favorite conversations with someone because they, they think the only way to apply these entrepreneur talents is to peel out and start their own thing. Mm -hmm. And that's absolutely not the case, right? You can, uh, from a coaching perspective, uh, we wor I work in organizations or with organizations that have tremendous entrepreneurial talent all throughout the organization, and, and they could be hundreds of employees, right? So there's, there's nothing about the entrepreneurial talent application or direction that says you got to go do your own thing. Nothing whatsoever, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, Dan, you and I, you and I talked about this actually on the pre-call and, and actually even – uh, earlier in the week, but I just got back, Jim, from uh, down in Florida, was with uh, uh, 12 different individuals who have founded organizations, so this, some of them 20, 30 years ago, um, all very successful, 
um, was really interesting going in. They had all taken the entrepreneurial strength finder, not to answer can they start the company because they have already done that. But what they're actually trying to think through is with their succession planning, they're trying to look at what, what sort of talents have they brought to the table. Um, the language we use with our, our, our EP10 a lot is that these are individuals who can start, grow, and sustain. Right, so with Dan's nine out of ten, and then him finding someone to help promote, um, it enables him to again not just start businesses or invest in others or with with thoughts and energy, but also to grow and sustain. What was really interesting, real quick, with this group is there was one of the individuals who only had one of the ten talents. So again, on this report, everybody gets ten, and then it kind of we've been talking about these colors. It kind of color codes them based on intensity. Um, he only had one that was dominant or orange. Um, that was probably a little scary for him, right, in a group of entrepreneurs. Uh, most everybody, minimum kind of kind of six, you know, several in the room with, with nine. Um, and so I asked uh, a colleague of his ahead of time, hey, how is he, how is he going to respond to this? And then I had a quick conversation with him, and he said, I am not an entrepreneur. He said, I partnered with, and he mentioned the other gentleman's name in the room, this guy has, I think, seven or eight dominant, um, dominant talents, you know, those entrepreneurial talents. And he said he really started it. I came in very quickly. He said very early on. But he said, I'm the glue of the organization. And he said this one piece that I bring was something that this other leader did not bring. Um, and I always, I always make the argument, Jim, too, um, for people that are asking, even whether it's, whether it's students or whether it's people already in business, um, there's not a Fortune 1000 company in the world that exists with just one person. And so even if somebody has all 10, they can start a business, but even as they're continuing to grow it, there's a little bit of what else do I need. Um, and for some of us, like that gentleman to step back and go, I'm not an entrepreneur and I'm okay not being an entrepreneur. Um, I mean, there's kids out there who might go, well, that'd be cool, but then they realize, I actually would rather be a school teacher. And if we gave them our you know, teacher perceiver, which is a very, very similar assessment, they might score through the roof on that. And Dan, you or I may not, right? So yeah. it's like, that's okay. We're not school teachers. So Dan, one more question for you as we kind of sure. bring this thing in for a landing. Uh, they're asking out in the chat room, uh, experience with startups, particularly in coaching with startups, as an example, maybe a five, uh, five member leadership team in a startup of maybe 30 employees. Any quick stories around that and, and, and maybe some tips for coaches that are looking to, to get into that from a leadership standpoint? Yeah, I think a couple things. So it's pretty common, uh, t two things to happen. One, one is I've seen where uh, a young company, first wave of managers or employees, let's say, you know, s they attract similar types of people, right? So not necessarily, well, sometimes interests even, right? But, but typically, hard workers attract hard workers, right? Or, you know, cognitive people attract cognitive people, and you end up with a management team that is, you know, they're all executing, and there's no strategy going on. And, you know, that's a really interesting kind of conversation to bring to the forefront, explore. And I, I think that a couple things come to mind. Number one is... Uh, if you're going to do an, any kind of lengthy engagement, I strongly encourage you to use the 34 theme sequence report, right? Because that, that just broadens the conversation beyond just the top five, which can be a, that's very powerful to a young company. And then I think a couple kind of conversations uh, to, to explore, and this is, you know, this is in everyone's toolkit. This is not, this is not my own thing, but I use it often. And that is the, uh, the talent mapping exercise, right? Where you you say, how does this talent, let's pick achiever, which is how a lot of people with, I mean, people with high achiever get stuff done using it. Challenge yourself to think, how do I influence people with it, right? How do I build relationships with achiever? And uh, how, how can I use it to process information or think strategically, right? And that just really starts to open up uh, the ways to apply some of those talents. So if you end up with a group that is all in influencing and they are not able to get anything done those are a couple you know a longer broader report the 34 theme sequence is one way to, to approach that but also that talent mapping exercise can be pretty powerful very good well that kind of wraps up the questions from chat jeremy you want to kind of uh, kind of wrap it up here and and uh, then we'll we'll land this thing 
Yeah, you bet. Yeah, Dan, this is this is great, man. I appreciate again your insights. Again, to uh, some of you out there, I know you're familiar a little bit with the EP10. You can access it more online or find out more about it. Uh, we can continue the dialogue and chat. Again, brand new instrument. Um, just rebranded the name. Um, the Entrepreneurial Strength Finder book is still out there. We will be rebranding the book as well. But if you want insight on it, um, you can get that. The assessment itself is twelve dollars on the uh, Gallup Strength Center, Center website. Um, as another Dan course said, in March. Yeah. Is that right, Jeremy? Another yeah. course in March. Yeah, I think. Uh, yep, I think we're, we're launching that next one. It's uh, on the website. You can sign up for that or just find out more information about it. But yeah, that'll be our next Great. Uh, next pilot on that course. So yeah. So again, in, uh, questions you have, let us know. Um, but again, appreciate you, Dan, with with just how you're jumping jumping right in. Again, you are an entrepreneur, so this is natural for you. But so fun to hear about, you know, how you're using strengths, uh, you know, and and Gallup tools just to kind of grow your own consulting business as well. So, thanks for being with us today. We'll be back here in two weeks. Um, we've got Mike Kinney, who is a 25-year veteran with Gallup. He is a a coach and a talent management consultant. So, so Mike actually brings a cool perspective because like we were talking about with the EP10, Gallup has other instruments on um, you know, interviewing talent in managers, leaders, salespeople. Um, Mike kind of brings a cool perspective where he's interviewing people for that talent and then with their strength finder results, oftentimes marrying those two things together or spending a lot of his time um, coaching and consulting with the hiring managers in those positions. So we're excited to hear from, from Mike um, and just kind of him to share his insights, what he's learned over the last 25 years uh, as a coach and interviewer with Gallup. That'll be back here on uh, February 6th. We have a lot available for you. Oh, Dan, I want to say thanks from, from my side of the microphone and I'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at the Gallup Strength Center, just gallupstrengthcenter.com. If you actually head out there right now, you'll see the new branding that we've done. That just went live uh, a couple weeks ago. Nothing's really changed, though. It's still the same engine behind the scene. If you take the assessment, it's the same exact one everybody else has been taking. Uh, and so if, you haven't, uh, if you're interested in that, there's lots of information around it. You can head out to the gallopstrengthcenter.com. You can send us your questions or comments, uh, and we'd love to have those as well. If you need to email those to us, coaching at gallop.com. You can also catch the recorded audio and video of this program, all the past ones. We've got a bunch of them. If you're new to these programs, we have tons of them available for you. Uh, they are all found out on our coaching site. Go to coaching.gallup.com, including the links to our Facebook group and our YouTube page, as well as all of our RSS feeds for these particular uh, forms of media. We have them available in both video and audio as well. I want to remind you we have a brand new meetup page. If uh, you don't have a meetup in your city, there's probably one coming to it near you. Uh, we've got some 16 or 17 cities now in the United States, plus three international, uh, doing weekly, or I'm sorry, doing monthly meetups that are out there. So check that out. Again, if you don't have one in your city and you want to start one, contact me, and I'll help you get that started as well. Jeremy mentioned the courses, and of course, we want to highlight our high-performance management course as well, which we're expanding in 2015, and a bunch of new courses coming out. Those are all listed on our Q12 site, so q12.gallup.com. Pretty easy to find our stuff. Just the name of it, .gallup.com, usually gets you there um, as well, and we have a, a whole bunch of high-performance management training courses coming out, everything available for you as well. And then we just want to remind you that if you enjoy this program, we'd love for you to share it. Just put that on your Twitter or your Facebook. Let folks know that, uh, that you, you enjoyed this, and we'd love to have them enjoy it as well. So help us get the word out as well. We'll invite you back to the next Call to Coach. Don't miss Theme Thursday as well next Thursday. Again, we got all kinds of great stuff for you. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.